On the record, I want everyone to know it's past Sam's bedtime. Way past Sam's bedtime. See, it's the truth. No, my. <laughs> Are you like my parents. Oh, sorry. sorry. Like my parents would say, it's midnight in Central Time. It's 5:30 in Portugal. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Who's running this show? <laughs> For Utah State, we have student athlete Sam Merrill, Diogo Brito, Coach Craig Smith. Coach, let's start with you. Some thoughts on tonight's game. Um, well, I, 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 our guy, you know, Fresno State's a very, very good team. You, it's hard to win. You win 22 games um, on a season in the Mountain West Conference. Um, we have so much respect for them, and, and uh, Justin's a really, really good coach, and, and, and they're a really good team, and they have so many weapons, and they just space you out. Um, they're so prolific um, on the offensive end where they just put a lot of pressure on you, and you know, our guys played, we played a great game tonight. We played a very good team, and we played a great game on both ends of the floor. Um, and we were, we were very good. We played well on offense, but I thought we were even better defensively. Um, to hold a team like that, I don't have the final state. Do you have, anybody have stats here? They're right here. It's 40%. Right. No, I didn't see it. Yeah, this is, the, I got the first half. Um, um, five for 26 from the three. And this is a team in Mountain West play that averages 11.5 threes a game. Um, at 39.5%, and those are some big-time numbers. So, um, you know, only, they only had six offensive rebounds, and, you know, we hold them to 35% in the first half. It kind of got away. They went on a 10-0 run there at the end of the game. But, um, you know, we had, back to our normal nine, you know, we had 23 assists. We're top 10 team in the country in assists. Um, and you could see the way we moved the ball. The ball had great energy and only nine turnovers. We handled their press. Um, very, very well um, all game long. And so, um, give our guys credit. We have five guys in double digits, and uh, it was just a great team effort uh, by the Aggies. Thank you, Coach. Questions for the student athletes first? Go ahead. Sam, uh, from 24 turnovers a night ago to just nine, coupled with the defensive effort and the assists, and what was at stake, would you say maybe this is your best all around performance as a team? You know, I think you could definitely make an argument for that. We, uh, you know, we obviously we turned the ball over a lot last night, but we weren't overly concerned about that. We felt like that was more of like an aberration. Um, but, yeah, we played really well. Um, and like Coach said, it started on the defensive end. Um, they're obviously so good offensively, and they have so many guys that can shoot and that can create their own shot. And, um, you know, when we're, when we're rolling like that defensively, that – that ignites our offense, and um, you know, I thought we did a great job moving the ball. We hit shots, we finished at the rim. Um, got a little sloppy there in the second half, but um, yeah, you could definitely, definitely make a case for that being our best overall game this year. Diogo had a great game, but what'd you think of his dunk attempt? <laughs> well, he did have one dunk. That's more than I have in my career, so. Um, <laughs> I, I had that same thing happen to me my freshman year, so <laughs> I know how he feels. Hopefully they put that on not top ten or something. <laughs> or they don't put it anywhere. That would be better. Sam and Diogo, um, you made 12 first 22 shots from 9 for 3. Um, how much energy did that give you to see shots fall early on? Well, definitely a lot of energy, but there's, there's something that we work a lot in practice, which is stop and score. And today that was huge for us, getting stops and just being able to convert every, every, almost every single time. Coach telling us five, uh, three, straight, three straight, straight stops and, and getting a lot of open shots and creating a lot of shots for each other through, through just ball movement, you know. So, yeah, the ball had energy and those shots falling all the time or most of the time definitely, definitely kept us, kept us with, a, with a good confidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, when, when, when we're guarding like we did from, from the beginning of the game, that, like I said, that ignites our offense and vice versa. When we're making shots like that, <clears throat> that gets our defense going. And, you know, our bench, especially in the first half defensively, when, when our bench, when we're defending by our bench, they, they really help us out and give us energy on the defensive end. And, and that gets our offense going. We were able to get stops and then get out in transition. And, um, we felt like we had opportunities to, to do well in transition, and we definitely did that tonight. A uh, question for Diogo. 
Um, your first half against New Mexico was not up to your usual standards, but uh, since then, you've been on fire, basically. 34 points, eight rebounds, you've got four assists tonight as well. What's been the key to you kind of finding your groove again after that first half? Well, I gotta give some credit to, to the bald guy over there, you know, our coach. He really, he, yesterday I was having a terrible you said first handsome half. Guy, right? What? You said handsome? Handsome, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, like, he, I was struggling and he, he really, he came, he came to me and we had a, he had a, a little talk and that really made me, you know, like, just look forward, forget what's behind you and ever since then I think just things kind of slowed down and that really opened, opened my game a lot. Mm -hmm. And then question for both of you. You've both been here at Utah State for a couple years now. You know the history. You know everything, um, what basketball means to the fans. And now you guys have put UC back into a conference title game for the first time since 2011, first time in a Mountain West title game. What does it mean to you guys personally to be able to be a part of kind of that resurgence of Utah State basketball? Yeah, I was at that game in 2011. Um, pretty sure it was at the Orleans Arena. <coughs> um, you know, it... We, we've both been here the same amount of time, and um, the last couple of years were tough for us. Obviously not, not playing up to the standards of, of Utah State basketball, but you know, it's, been, it's been such a fun ride this year, being able to finally get back to where, you know, almost to where Utah State belongs, and um, we're so excited and grateful for our fans who were, were awesome again tonight. We're hoping to have a lot more tomorrow, so. Um, it's not that long of a drive. It's only six hours. Coach will pay for your gas if you need to. So, and your uh, speeding tickets. <laughs> well, let's not get too carried away. But, but uh, you know, we're, we're we're so excited for the the opportunity to play for a championship tomorrow, and uh, try to cut down some nets. And hopefully, we have have a huge crowd like we did tonight. Over here, to your right. So, Sam, um, you guys are obviously going to be playing San Diego State tomorrow. You had 35 <laughs> points in that first matchup in San Diego. Um, what do you think you did well there and that you could hopefully, uh, for you, translate or repeat that tomorrow? Um, they guarded me differently in the first game than they did in the second game. And, um, you know, I was able to get a few open shots early on, and that kind of got my momentum going. Um, I don't remember scoring as much in the second game, but... Um, obviously we won, so that was more important. But our defense was really, really good in the second game. Um, but, you know, our, our entire offensive system is, is predicated on just, just taking what comes and not, not forcing things and moving the ball and sharing the ball. So, you know, me personally and as a team, we're just going to play our way. And if that leads to me having open shots and making shots, great. If not, then we'll focus on getting other guys' shots. What do you anticipate most? Um in this rubber match, just playing them for the third time? Well, we know they're, they're very physical. Um, they've been here before. They, they played in this game last year and won it. So um, they're very talented. They defend well. We have, obviously, all, this, all the respect in the world for San Diego State. So we, we expect it'll be a battle for sure. Are you already anticipating who's going to be guarding you, stuff like that? Um, they've had the same guy on me for the last two games. So I'm sure it'll be Hemsley again. <laughs> but we'll see. <clears throat> All right, Sam, can you tell me what some of the thoughts were going through your mind in that first half when you were, I mean, you started within the first 15 seconds, you made that beautiful three, and then the last two seconds, you make three as well. Just tell me what kind of thoughts are going through your head when you're having that good of a game? You know, to be honest, we, we don't take a lot of time to, to celebrate. I mean, we are, and I think that's what, part of what makes us a good team is you know, when we hit a three, we're immediately yelling at each other, hey, we got to get a stop, we got to get a stop. Or when we have a dunk, we're, we're celebrating, but we're, we're trying to just focus on the next play. And, um, to be honest, I didn't even know we had scored 50 points until we were in the locker room. I just knew we were up by 20-something. So um, we're, you know, that's, that's our goal is to continue to focus on the next play, and that'll be how we try and do things tomorrow. Uh, for either player, um, you guys had not beaten St uh, San Diego State since joining the Mountain West uh, until you did it just a couple weeks ago. How much of a mental hurdle or, or was that to get over, it and, and you know, does it give you a little bit more of an advantage tomorrow? Well, that's actually something that, that we've been told every single game before we play San Diego State. We've never <laughs> beat them. We've never beaten them. And, and you do have that, that in your mind that you've got to beat them sometime, and 
when we did it, it felt good, but I thought the main difference was that when we beat them, we, we just believed, you know, like we, we went into the game knowing that we could beat them. We, we studied them, we studied them really hard and just that, just that mindset that we can, we can beat these guys and when we did, you know, it just, it just felt good, I guess. <laughs> Sam, we've been hearing for the last couple of weeks that Mountain West is a two-bid league. So do you guys feel like you have to win tomorrow to get into the NCAA tournament? And then San Diego State really doesn't have any pressure on them. So how difficult is it to prepare for a team in this game of this magnitude when you're playing a team that doesn't really have any pressure on them? Um, you know, I feel that we, we want to cut down the nets tomorrow. Um, and I'm, I'm sure San Diego State feels the same way. So I know technically they... They have nothing to lose or whatever, but, you know, if I were them, I would, I feel the same way. You know, we want to win a championship, so um, we, don't, we don't know what's going to happen on Sunday, um, but fortunately we have a day in between, so we'll just, we'll focus on tomorrow, and um, like I said, our main goal is to cut down some nets tomorrow. That would, that would be pretty fun, so we're going to play like it. So... Diogo, you've really excelled these last few games, and in the tournament, uh, coming off the bench, like, what is your approach when you're coming into the game off the bench and you, in terms of your contributions and what you're looking to do for the team? Well, that's something that it started all the way in at Montana State, you know? Just just embracing the your role, you know? Of course, it be, before, before the year starts, you're, you're fighting for the starting role, for the starting spot, but, you know, things things just happen the way they happen, and if, if coach wants me to come off the bench, bring energy, just do do things right, do things the right way, and I'll just try to follow that lead. And it's it's been it's been a long year. It's been a any. I can't I can't say. Sorry. Uh, you know, like it's been a long year, but just I w once I embraced that role, that really that really opened opened my mind. You know, just. Just, just do your thing, and it doesn't matter who starts the game. It's, it's about who, who finishes it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to dismiss the student athletes at this time. Okay. We'll keep Thank coach you. for a few minutes. <clears throat> Thank you, man. <clears throat> Questions for the coach? Go ahead, down to your left. Coach, how do you get a team, or how do you go about getting a team that shoots 39% from three to go, um, whatever it is, five of 26 tonight? Well, I thought we defended really well. You know, there's no secrets at this time. We played them twice. You know, they played us twice. They know us inside out and backwards. We know them inside out and backwards. And so you have that, you, you um, go back to that experience of playing them twice and you have a good feel for their personnel and you know their scheme and, you know, they know our calls and how to defend it. We know most of their calls and how to defend it. And then, you know, shooting's contagious, right? And, and obviously, they missed some wide open shots, too. I mean, we got, you know, we defended well, but they also missed some open looks. And sometimes that happens, you know, and that's the beauty of sport. You just don't know. You have an idea what to expect. You game plan like crazy. You, um, you go through the whole routine. Uh, it's a quick turnaround. You know, they played last, last night at this time, and they were up here this time. We played, obviously, the one game earlier. And, so it's a quick turnaround, and you, you're throwing your guys a lot of information. Um, but shooting's contagious, and, um, and we were fortunate tonight to be able to hold them to that percentage. And we didn't let them get out in transition. Uh, they are fast and electric in transition, and I thought we did a really good job um, getting back and eliminating, for the most part, easy baskets in transition. Right here. Coach, uh, you talked late in the season about being exhausted emotionally and physically. Um, you got that bye to end the, the season, had a like nine-day break. Uh, you seem to be the fresher team tonight. Uh, Justin Hudson just kind of said you guys look like you were quicker to the ball. How much did that help you having that break? Well, it didn't help us last night, uh, but it probably helped us tonight. Uh, and that's, that's the hard thing. It's a... You know, you guys all have been around the game a long time. Like when you when you when you don't play a game for nine days, that is a long. I mean, that is just that's like three weeks in football. I mean, honestly, and um, so that's a we needed it at that time because I think we had twelve or thirteen straight games, so we were we were tired, and uh, both physically and mentally, and um, so so we needed that. But you know, you could tell last night we we weren't. 
um, and, and a lot of credit to New Mexico, like I said last night, but I didn't think we were as on point and as sharp with some stuff um, that we normally are. And, um, but obviously, that second half, we were clearly better than the first half last night, and then we carried that momentum um, into tonight. But our, our guys have had a great focus, great concentration, and it's just a determined, hungry group that really wants to represent Utah State in a great fashion and, of course, the Mountain West Conference in a, in a great fashion. We have time for one last question. Go ahead. Coach, uh, you're about to play your third game in three days. You probably haven't had time to reflect at all, but <clears throat> if, have you had a moment to kind of pinch yourself and say, this is really happening in my first year at Utah State, this kind of success, this kind of quick, this uh, kind of speed? Not really. It, it's been obviously incredibly exciting because from day one, I, I mean, I, I can think back to a, to our practices in April, and if I would have had any hair, it wouldn't have been left. And then the summer, and, but you just remember, it's the journey. And I, and I vividly remember where we were. I've always, I'm a history major. So where we were, where we are, and where we're going. And in our motto, because we are so young, and I know I've talked about this some, but it, it's almost helped us in the process in a you know, kind of distorted or a weird kind of way that we've really, you know, um, what, seven, eight months ago, we were like the, the toddler. And then we were kind of, the, or we were the infant, and then we became the toddler, and we were just kind of crawling, and you just go through all the, and then we kind of started walking, and then we started running, and, and I, told, I said about three weeks ago, I think we were up to ninth grade, and now we might be a senior. <laughs> like, I don't know. But, um, but it's been really fun to see the progression not, with the team, first and foremost, but with individual guys. You can just see the, the progression guys have made. And you have kind of like an unsung hero in Abel Porter and Justin Bean. You know, those two guys earned a scholarship um, right after, um, shortly after Christmas. And, and just seeing their progression and how they, you know, Justin, we were playing 10 guys regularly in, in November and December, 10 of our 12 guys that we dressed. Uh, Alec Johnson wasn't even on our team for a while. We did walk-on tryouts uh, just with, you know, we had sent a mass email to all the students, and Alec shows up, and Alec's a good player. But, but Bean wasn't even, like, in the top 10 rotation. But we'd leave practice every day, and I'm like, I'd say to the staff, like, why aren't we playing Abel Porter more? Why aren't we playing Justin Bean more? Because practice has got to mean something, and it does. And, and, and just, you got to give those guys credit for staying the course Right, just showing up every single day when they weren't getting a lot, and now they're playing, you know, fantastic basketball for us. So, you know, we'll reflect after the season, but every day for us has been about let's keep getting better. Let's get better today in practice. Let's get better over the next two weeks, and that's what's exciting. We can still keep getting better, and that's what's been exciting. I think we've gotten better now than we were three weeks ago, and so you know, sometimes when you have a five and a half month season, you just some teams will just kind of flatline. And, and these guys have just showed this energy and this enthusiasm to come to the gym every day and let's keep getting better. And that's what's been exciting. Okay, thank you so much for your time, Coach. All right, thank you guys.